Do twins make life easier or are they just hard to handle? Stick around to find out. Hi, I'm Sean from Lens Cove Lessons and Boating. One of the things that people don't realize about our marina is that because a lot of our videos are based on day boating, pontoons, runabout, center consoles, is that we have a full marina with lots of cruisers on board. And in fact, my family and I have done several trips down to the Keys in Florida. So we do a lot of cruiser boating and I get the benefit of driving these boats every day as I maneuver them around the docks and move them in and out for service and winterizing and storage. We always get this question when people are buying larger cruisers. Is it easier to drive a single engine or a twin engine? And there are some differences to consider. Is it a twin engine inboard or is it a twin engine stir drive? It might even be a twin engine pod drive. But on today's video, we're really gonna focus on a twin engine inboard. We're gonna cover how the basic operation of a twin is different than a single, how you would maneuver around the docks with a twin engine inboard, we're gonna point out the differences of a twin engine inboard and a twin engine stern drive so you can see why they're different to handle. And we're gonna give you some quick tips at the end to help you feel more comfortable maneuvering around the dock. So when you have a twin engine inboard boat, you have two counter-rotating props, which are actually beneath the boat and slightly in from the stern. And why that is important is that it's a different position of a pivot point than you would have with the stern drive. The stern drives are out at the very back of the boat. They have the advantage of being able to move from side to side, which can vector your thrust more efficiently. But because the inboards are, have the propellers slightly forward, what you're gonna find is that when you put it in forward and reverse, you're not only getting that push pull side to side, but you're getting more of a twist on the boat and I'm just maneuvering the boat here because it is a little breezy today, but you're getting a little more twist. So just like this maneuver is easier with your body than this maneuver is, it's the same thing with a twin inboard because the thrust is more towards the middle of the boat than on a stern drive when it's right at the very back of the boat. It makes a huge difference. So when you're maneuvering around the dock, you try, in this case, this is a 34 C ray, and we have our throttles on this control and we have our shift on this control. Sometimes you'll find different configurations. Sometimes you'll have a bow thruster like this one does and I'm gonna to try to ignore it today, although it is a very handy tool. And sometimes you have shift and throttle all on the same lever. That is a little easier in so far as it doesn't confuse you on which one to use. But it also, when I put this in and out of gear, I'm putting it right in and out of gear, which takes away that throttle, which can speed the boat up and potentially cause more damage. So the nice thing about this is that I can literally shift in and out of gear and push and pull the back end of the boat to get it to do what I want to do. The other thing to remember and check out this video here on other boat docking tips for small boats is that boat docking is all about momentum and figuring out what momentum works best for the boat given the current and given the wind direction and figuring out how the momentum can be used to help you in and out of the dock. So don't try to fight the momentum, try to use it to your advantage. So as I get closer to the dock, I'm taking my time. I'm shifting in and out of gear. And with a, a true inboard cruiser, with twins, you can hear the transmission every time you shift in and out of gear. It's a very smooth process. So don't be afraid to use neutral because what that does is it allows you to adjust and see what's gonna happen with the momentum of the boat. And it also allows you to not build up too much momentum because one of the biggest challenges that customers with cruisers have is that they get going too fast and then it becomes very challenging to correct. When you're going extremely slow, you can correct more easily and you can also abandon the trial and start again without too much effort. So the key in a day like today, and we have a little bit of a breeze, you can see that Canadian flag blowing there, is that we're gonna try to 
get a bit of momentum going so that the bow of the boat starts to swing away from the dock and the stern lines up and we're gonna allow the breeze to help us into the slip. Make sure you use forward to slow it down like a brake every once in a while. It's much easier when you have helpers both on the boat and on the dock. Leave your engines running while you're doing this and then tie up the boat and hook up your power cord while the engines are still running, just in case you need to move the boat. So some tips that you're gonna to wanna to remember when you're docking with a twin inboard boat are to always start by making sure your lines and fenders are set to go. Whether you're alone or you have a crew with you, make sure your lines and fenders are set. Get them at the right height for the dock and make sure that you're ready to go to be able to pass to them to someone on the dock to help you out. Secondly, make sure your steering wheel is completely straight. It's one of the hardest things to do to do these maneuvers to twist the boat back and forth using only the shift if your steering wheel isn't straight. Thirdly, try to avoid as much as possible using your throttle. The throttle can get you into trouble by giving you too much momentum. There are the odd times where a little bit can help you swing the bow faster in case you need to straighten it up when going into a slip. Remember though that if you use a little bit of throttle, you need to return it to the idle position before you can shift the transmissions. Docking is one of the most stressful parts of boat ownership. We understand that. And as long as you have the knowledge and some patience, it usually goes relatively smoothly. It's so stressful that people often name their boat based after it. Thanks for joining us on today's Lens Cove Lessons in Boating. Make sure you like this video and hit that subscribe button for more content just like this. Stay safe, have fun, and we'll see you out on the water.